everybody, welcome back to the channel here and I am back once again with Tim Forshee of Forshee Law. Gotta love talking to the attorneys. We had a video on the channel a little bit ago now uh, from Thailand of a guy who pulled a gun on a dude who was a known kind of problem maker and miscreant in the area. Pulled a shotgun on him, dude grabs the shotgun and ends up getting shot over it. I've heard plenty of people say, well, you know, I'll pull a, guy, a gun on a guy and if he takes a step towards me, well then he's the one who's responsible for his own death and that'll be perfectly legally justifiable. And I go, is it? Let's talk to the lawyer. Firearms Legal Protection is who I trust to help me after a use of force incident. If you're a Firearms Legal Protection member, you can attend our monthly active self-protection training seminars for free. Check out all they offer to their members at the link below. So the first time I watched this video, Tim, I, I, I was like, whoa, why'd he pull a gun on that guy? Like, uh, okay, like uh, the guy is hollering at him or yeah. whatever, but what'd you think of him? Let's just start there. What do you start think of him there? pulling the gun? There was, I, there, again, it's been a while since I watched the video, but as I recall, there was a marked disparity force issue. I think the guy was much bigger, younger much and younger. Younger and bigger. And right there, he's got two strikes. So we've got okay. a guy who's, and also, the guy behind the counter, I don't think had any real means of egress. I mean, he was pretty much trapped. Yeah. Once his wife kind of scooted out, as I recall, got out, he's kind of trapped. There's no way he's going to slide past that guy, yeah. right? And the guy is really acting menacing and hulking. So uh, was he justified in shooting the guy at that point? And I don't think so. Was he justified in drawing? Uh, you know, you talked about pepper spraying the guy. That was, I think that would have been a better choice. Uh, but I also, if he pepper sprayed the guy, now, in that close confine, depending on the nature of the pepper spray, they could both be blind and gasping for air. And there's a shotgun leaning against the wall right next to the guy. You know, we're groping around in the dark trying to find a shotgun, and that poses some problems as well. So, but uh, I, I don't really have a problem with him deciding to draw a gun or present a, a, a weapon at that point. Okay. But as you pointed out very eloquently in the video, uh, close quarters combat that starts at close quarters, shotguns are fantastic for stopping fights. But uh, boy, is it easy to take a, a 42 inch piece of metal away from somebody. I mean, a baseball bat, a shotgun, exact same leverage, exact same physics. Yeah. Uh, man, that's not the gun you want in a, in a close quarters battle where somebody's got their hands on you. Yeah, I mean, he grabs a hold of the uh, of the barrel of the gun and then points it right at himself, which is why then the guy. Yeah. Uh, now, now there's a couple other interesting things with that. Mm -hmm. So, so I think if he's not justified to draw the gun yeah. or to display the gun, right. well, then it makes the actions afterwards. Well, wait a minute, you were the provoker, you were the Correct. aggressor. Now the guy's trying to get a hold of a gun in self-defense. In self-defense. So That's yeah. exactly what happened yeah. in Ahmaud Arbery's murder, mm -hmm. right? Is right. that, oh, okay, the McMichaels pile out of the truck yeah. with guns, and then Arbery says, I can't run anymore, right. and then tries to take the gun away, ends up getting shot, and the, the jury's now, and, and police, if, if you disagree with me on that, both the state jury and the federal jury, different right. juries in different cases for each of them found all of them guilty of right. every charge, right. right? So this was unjustified conduct yep. all the way through because they chased him and he was trying to defend himself. So if he wasn't justified to draw the gun, right. then the, any claim of self-defense is down the toilet. I mean, yeah, I believe arguably you're correct. But of course, you can't talk about the, his decision to present the gun without already having a self-defense argument. So right. it's just a matter of chicken and the egg. You know, does that, if you start the fight, you lose the right to claim self-defense. Well, was, did that start the fight or did the guy charging him start the fight? Right. That's a jury question. That's a fact question. Was so, him showing up and, right. and, you know, I've got history with this guy right. and he hurt me really bad. He could put me in the hospital. Right. He's big and he's strong and he doesn't listen to reason. And he, you know, he won't just walk up and smack you upside the head. Right. He's going to beat you in I the ground. I happen to know he's beat three people badly, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's all your mindset. Things that you actually know are going to be relevant to your decision-making process. Yeah. So, so then, uh, Okay, so let's assume for the rest of this that he's justified to draw that, that shotgun and then he ends up shooting the guy and, and okay, the guy lays out there, lays there and bleeds. Uh, I don't think, you know, he probably doesn't have a legal obligation to render aid, mm -hmm. though I'd love your thoughts on that. That's a real controversial one. Um, there's, I know there's some folks that have a web show, uh, uh, some attorneys that do a lot of legal stuff on the, on the web, and, and they just, I saw a recent program, because I had several people send it to me and ask me to comment on it, where they basically advise that you do not carry a med kit because it can be used I've against you. I've commented on that. I, as have I. I think they're wrong. I, and and I, I really like what they do, but I, I, I think that was one where they really swung and missed, and I think they were completely wrong. Um, I guess I would just turn the question around and I would ask this. How many police officers render aid to somebody they were forced to shoot? And the answer is very very few because yeah. how do you know his accomplice isn't about to come charging into the into the into the little convenient mart uh, that just saw his buddy get shot 
And how do you know that that guy that was acting as the watch out across the street doesn't come running in and stab you to death when you're bent over giving CPR, et cetera, et cetera? Well, how do I know I'm not going to get hepatitis or HIV from the blood that I'm going to be messed up with, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole lot of downside risk here. I'm not an EMT. I don't want to put a rib through this guy's heart when he would have had a chance to survive if I hadn't. Et cetera, well, and et cetera, police et officers will, will render aid. They have to render aid once the scene is safe, right? Once it's code four. But generally speaking, oftentimes the EMTs will have to wait before it's rendered sure. code four. So, well, and, you know, and, you're there right now. Are you sure that's a safe scene? Because I'm not. Well, and, and a cop has cuffs yep. and buddies that's right. and all those things. And then once they've got him in cuffs, they've searched him, they know that there's other cops around to watch what's going on. Sure, I'll render, you know, I'll right. render aid because I want to preserve life. I don't have cuffs. Nope. I don't have buddies. I can't guarantee the scene safe. And if you do, if you've got three friends there that can watch you to make sure that you're safe, and maybe you can put flex cuffs on the guy or duct tape or whatever the heck, it, a, a good, as you always say, a good, sound, moral person, I hope, will do what they can to preserve life, right? None of us are going to, we're not murderers, we're not going to sit there and gleefully watch the yeah. guy bleed out. As you pointed out on the channel, I mean, not to get grisly, not to turn this into a PG-13 or an R, but when that shotgun blast hit that guy, if you watch that a couple of times, you're going to notice like a white hot plasma jet of, of, of molecularized human flesh come out of that yeah. guy. Like you said, I don't care if you had rock salt in that thing. At that range, that guy's got to have massive, massive internal hemorrhage. He wasn't there. living through that. There's no way he's going to survive that. So, I mean, again, I, am I going to make it worse if I get down there and put my hands in the goo and try to save his life? I mean, that one was one where it was a lost cause. So. As Clint Smith is famous for saying, you know, pistols poke holes in people. Rifles put holes through people. Shotguns rip chunks of people off and throw it on the ground. Exactly. Uh, and, and, yeah, that, that one is, uh, was, was kind of yuck. Yeah. Now then, there's another issue, counselor, that shows up in this one, that he hung, the, the defendant here hung around and stayed for police to yes. get there. You know, they, they, Which is great. Yes, this is smart. Glad right? If there's that. no threat, yep. right? If, you, if, right? if you're not in fear for your safety anymore because you've handled the threat, cool, stick around, be the good guy. That's, that's a mm -hmm. good thing. And then he told the district attorney that- This is the one that just makes me- <laughs> That he didn't mean to pull the trigger. Yeah, shut up. Right, I think I've told you before, my, one of my favorite sayings, I, I don't know if I came up with this or not, but you know, everybody has the right to remain silent. Yes. It seems that very few people have the ability to. Yes, Ron White, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, my God. God. Because now he just admitted to manslaughter. Yeah, he just admitted I didn't mean to shoot him, Which but I did. Which is negligent homicide or manslaughter, I mean, at that point. So yeah. it's like, you just turned what was pretty clearly, I think a pretty easily proven self-defense case into a questionable act of manslaughter. So. Yeah. Shut up. So he didn't like, mean to, he, I'm sure he probably didn't even know what he meant when he said it. Right. But he said it. What, so what I think that, that sometimes people do, A, they are in this humongous cocktail of after defensive encounter, you know, adrenaline, yep. cortisol, you know, norepinephrine, epinephrine. I mean, you're, you're obviously every gland in your body goes yep. smush the yep. second this happens. And for the hours, even days after that, right. you, you are non compass menace. Right. You're not thinking clearly. And you are and you not. also, you're not going to have clear memories of the event. You're not. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the movie Captain Phillips, we, John and I love movies. We were talking about movies earlier. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie Captain Phillips, you see this very competent character uh, portrayed by Tom Hanks who makes really good decisions to save his crew. He's very thoughtful, very analytical through the whole movie. At the very end, after the huge traumatic event where he's rescued by the Navy SEALs and he's taken back aboard the USS Bainbridge and he goes into the sick bay and you see him suffering from post-shock adrenaline. Yeah. And it is unbelievable. The, the, that, that scene lasts about three minutes and oh my God, is that what every client on uh, the shooting scenes that I've responded to, that's the client that I found waiting yeah. for me. And he can't speak and he can't hear and he can't focus and he's crying irrationally and then he's laughing and it's just, that's exact. Is that when you want to give a statement to a cop? It's, it's one of those things that hopefully a great cop sees somebody that's just been in there and said, you know, I can't give you legal advice, yeah. but if I was in your shoes, yeah. I would shut up right now and call, yeah. call police, you know, call yourself a lawyer before you made a statement to the police or yep. a detective. And, and ask yourself how police officers treat each other after a shooting. Yeah. They don't do that. Right. They, don't, they don't question. They, in fact, most of them have a hard, fast policy in, in the department that they don't, they're not allowed to be interviewed for at least 24 hours. And they have a union rep and a lawyer present when they get interviewed. And when they are involved in the shooting, all the other cops know that guy has now just gone into the cone of silence. Yep. And, and you'll hear him. Ah! Don't talk to me. Go sit in your car. On the Take back your badge of my business, off. On the back of my business card, I've got like some advice about what to say and what not to say. The short version is just don't say anything. But at the very end, it says uh, to the officer, please treat me with the same level of professional courtesy you would treat a colleague in the same situation. Mm. 
And I think that I've had cops tell me, you know what, that that rings. You know, that's something that most people wouldn't think to say. And when I go, you know what, this guy's right. Yeah. You know, I don't need to be interrogating this guy right now. He's been through a really horrible trauma. Yeah. Especially in a home invasion where it's they weren't out, you know, getting in a fight over drugs in an alley or something. You know, it's pretty clear what's going on here. And and of course, you know, my cop buddies, they get they they they, they show up and, and deal with miscreants, <laughs> troublemakers, ne'er do wells. <laughs> Right, that's who they interact with all the time. All the time, yep. And so the shootings they get called to very often are not good people no. doing good things. Nope. They're bad people doing bad things. Right. One and scumbag so, killed another scumbag. Yeah, it's called and so Darwin. So yeah. when you get scumbag one to admit that he did bad things to scumbag two, because and even though scumbag two needed killing, uh, scumbag one ought not have done the killing. And right. so when you get him to admit that, great, that's just what it said. Have a nice day. Yeah. Uh, enjoy Club Fed. Um, <laughs> You know, live in a gated community. On, on I wish I had half of the anecdotal sayings that you have. You, you're just, <laughs> I just love it's it. It's what I'm known for. <laughs> uh, but, but as a good person, when he said, I didn't mean to shoot him. Right. I went, oh no, you just now admitted to a crime. And, Done. And you locked your attorney into that theory. That's right. Because otherwise, you, you lied. And when you lied to the cops, that is evidence of the depraved well, mind. That, That's mens rea. At that point, you, you have to bring some psychological experts in, in front of the jury and you have to explain why he said that when it was clearly wrong, right? And so now we're talking about crazy expenses. We're crazy expenses, crazy risks, because anytime we talk, about, we talk about expert witnesses talking to juries, guess what? There's a razor blade hanging right over your yeah. neck. Yeah. yeah, you've got the sword of Damocles hanging right, right over you there. That's right. Uh, because uh, it, it's... When I'm worried, you know, the, that, that adage in court, right? When we're explaining, we're losing. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, okay, yes, he did say that, but that was an excited utterance of somebody who is under this huge concoction right. of, of stuff. Now, I'm not an expert in human biophysiology. Uh, I'm, I'm very well versed in it. I'm a subject matter enthusiast. Uh, but, you know, can I explain that? Maybe. But you're better. It's because of all of that brain chemical, right. you, what you have to do is you have to remember... Uh, shut up, shut up, yep. shut up, shut up. The words that come out of my mouth are, I demand to speak to my attorney. It, it always boils down to this. You know, you, you've all heard the Miranda warnings a thousand times, hopefully only on television or in movies. Um, but, but remember, you, you, Abner Miranda, a terrible person who still had rights. No kidding. Isn't that what I was talking about? You know, thank God we have that case named after him. This, 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 this poor human. guy who was abused by the police department. And then you hear the, the whole story about Ernesto. But uh, yeah, the, the Miranda warnings at the end, they say anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. And I always tell people, if you say nothing, then nothing can be used against you in a court of law. I mean, right. it's pretty simple. I mean, we can always add things later, but we can't subtract things earlier. So and, and when remember, in doubt, and, I, and I, you know, I've taken several classes from Mass IU, and I consider him a colleague and a friend, and I think he's the subject matter expert in a lot of this. Sure. And, and what he says, you know, give the bare facts, the five things, explain yeah. that you're the good person, here's some witnesses, here's some evidence. I totally agree with all that. I totally agree with all that. The, pa the problem is, is that the person that's in this situation probably didn't take one of Mass's classes. They probably haven't been on three tours in combat in Afghanistan. They probably pooped their pants. They're freaking out. They've got their, their heart rate's 197. And now is not the time to rehearse and practice this. Well, shut up. You can always say it later, right? Yeah, I mean, so when in doubt, I'd rather you say nothing than say too much. And I'm afraid that a lot of people, myself included, I'm proving it right now, will say too much instead of too little. So. Well, and if you can, you know, so like on my watch, I have a heart rate monitor, right? Mm -hmm. And if I can go, okay, this all got done, everything's cool, I look at my heart rate, okay, my heart rate is 69, uh, oh. I'm, I'm in a good spot, I actually am, am in my right mind, and no, okay, no, I'm good, all right. So if I can do all that math and then say, you know, officer, I want you to not miss that evidence, right. I want you, that person was there. Yep. Okay, fine. Great. But if you can't validate that, if That's you can't right. go, wait, what are the things I need? Uh, am I in my right mind? Yep. The, the second you ask the question, you must assert your right to silence. Because then what you say, what you don't say can't be used against right. you. Assert. I, I invoke my right to silence and demand to speak to my attorney. I'm just afraid I'm going to say, I think some shell casings went underneath the refrigerator and old lady Miller across the street is a real busybody. You might want to check with her. And did I tell you I cheated on an algebra test in seventh grade? Yeah. And you're just going to start talking because, you know, especially if you're Jewish or Catholic, you are doomed because your, your built-in societal guilt factor is going to just eat you alive. So it's a real phenomenon called logorrhea, yep. uh, which diarrhea of the mouth. Yep. It's an actual known thing. <laughs> it's not a joke. Yep. The words just come out. Yep. And so... You know, could I justify the drawing the gun? I think we could, mm -hmm. right? It was sketchy, it wasn't perfect, but right. beyond a reasonable doubt, no. Could I justify the shot? I could, you know, again, given everything else that was there. Because if he hadn't shot, the, guy, the guy's bigger, that's gonna younger, take the he's gonna take the shot and you're gonna die. So, yeah, 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 okay. And then the words. <laughs> that's a tougher, 
Tougher and, sell. Yeah. And now, of course, we don't know. I don't know Thai law. I don't know Thailand's. Uh, I, I can tell you the little exposure I have to Thailand's legal system says I wouldn't want to be charged with anything yeah. under Thailand's legal system. No doubt. Uh, and I've been there uh, three times, so I've spent significant time. In I Thailand. have had Thai food. Yeah. So yeah. Delicious. Even better when you're in Chiang Mai or Chiang Rai or Phuket or uh, Pattaya or Bangkok. I love Thailand. Um, but uh, listen, watch what you say yeah. and because it can really give you a hard time on that. Even if your actions were justified, if you say stupid things at the end, it can land you in the Well, pokey. another quick example, of, and I, again, I'm way older than you, but I know you're well-versed in all this more than I am, but the, the, the famous Bernie Getz case in New York, mm -hmm. the New York subway shooter. Um, yeah. He didn't say what the press said he said. He said it in jest after hour 21 of a severe interrogation by NYPD. He said it like, I mean, he was sleep deprived, he was adrenaline surged, he was not, you know, and he wasn't probably a particularly bright guy in the first place. And he said, oh yeah, I just told him here's another and gave him the last shot in the head. That's what he told the cop. Right. That's not what he said at the scene. And that wasn't really what he meant. He said it because he was completely exhausted and stupidly he was talking. And it came back that, you know, the, the press seized upon that and went crazy. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. But, uh, and I'm not saying I want Bernie Getz the babysitter anytime soon. No, but, no. But I think that that was a justifiable shooting. And the thing people always forget, the jury agreed. The jury agreed. I always tell folks this all the time. There are plenty of cases where somebody's like, that was murder. Yeah. And I said, uh, so it went to a jury of that yeah. person's peers and they disagreed with you. Well, juries suck. And I was like, okay, so if you think you're smarter than 12 honest people right. uh, who looked at all the evidence you presented the before evidence. them, yeah. right? And, and weighed both sides and received yeah. the instructions of the jury of the law. Not that a jury is perfect, but I think the cool reasoning of 12 people Probably better than what you got from social media. And we're seeing that in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. Oh, Usually, right? I mean, all these people are talking about how Kyle Rittenhouse is a murderer. Um, no. no, clearly wasn't. No, uh, he's clearly not justified conduct, yeah. and the jury saw that, right? right? And, and so there it is. So, what's the rule? What's the big lesson out of this one? Zip it. Shut up. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Always, buddy. Thanks. <laughs>